Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. The end is near. The end of the Zionist, the IDF, is near. And inshallah, in this video, watch very carefully, listen very carefully, because we are going to find out what is happening at the moment. Before we move on, just to remind you, most of my viewers are not subscribed. If you're one of them, consider subscribing. Let's see what this video is all about. We dictate the framing and portrayal of events related to the conflict, both domestically and internationally. Following the lost lives of Palestinians and the widespread destruction in Gaza, Israel's international reputation has indeed faced significant scrutiny and criticism. Images and reports of civilian casualties, including children, as well as the extensive damage to infrastructure, have led to condemnation from various international actors, including governments, human rights organizations, and the United Nations. Despite this, the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, have continued to promote a narrative emphasizing the weakening of Hamas. Hamas is not weakened. In fact, it is quite the opposite. They have gained grounds and we have seen U.S. IDF uh, forces, not U.S., just IDF forces. They have withdrawn a lot of them from Gaza, subhanAllah. ...includes assertions that the war in northern Gaza, where much of the initial fighting occurred, has been largely concluded, with significant damage inflicted on Hamas's infrastructure and leadership. Despite these efforts to shape the narrative, there are growing concerns among some international observers and human rights organizations about the proportionality and legality of Israel's military actions in Gaza. In a complete departure from the Israeli narrative, Dan Halutz, a former Israeli minister chief, has suggested that Israel has lost the war against the Palestinian resistance group Hamas in the besieged Gaza Strip. Subhanallah. ...violations of international humanitarian law and human rights abuses. Recent developments have brought into question the narratives put forth by the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, regarding the ongoing conflict with Hamas in Gaza. While the IDF has sought to present a narrative of Israel's military superiority and success in weakening Hamas, there are indications that this portrayal may not accurately reflect the situation on the ground. Critics argue that the IDF's narrative to the public and the international community may be designed to create the perception of Israel emerging victorious against Hamas, even if the actual outcome of the conflict is less clear-cut. The narrative promoted by the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, was further bolstered by the severe challenges faced by journalists attempting to report from Gaza. Operating in Gaza has always been fraught with danger, with journalists risking their personal safety to cover the conflict. In recent times, these risks have been compounded by heightened tensions and escalating violence, making it increasingly difficult for journalists to access the area and report independently. The limited number of journalists still operating in Gaza face numerous obstacles, including the threat of violence from militant groups and the risk of being caught in the crossfire between warring factions. This has led to a scarcity of first-hand reporting from Gaza, allowing the IDF to maintain greater control over the flow of information and shape the narrative surrounding the conflict. Meanwhile, the International Press Corps has largely been confined to Jerusalem, unable to access Gaza due to safety concerns and logistical challenges. As a result, international media outlets have become heavily reliant on IDF sources for much of their information and updates on the situation in Gaza. This dependence on IDF-provided information has inevitably influenced the framing of news coverage and contributed to the dissemination of the IDF's narrative to a global audience. The IDF's strategic communication efforts, coupled with the limited access and reporting from Gaza, have effectively enabled the Israeli military to control the narrative surrounding the conflict and shape public perceptions, both domestically and internationally. By controlling the flow of information and selectively releasing details about its operations, the IDF has been able to portray its actions in a favorable light while downplaying or omitting potentially damaging information. However, despite the challenges faced by journalists and the dominance of the IDF's narrative, alternative sources of information, including social media, citizen journalism, and independent reporting, have emerged to provide a more nuanced and diverse perspective on the conflict. These alternative sources have helped to counterbalance the IDF's narrative, and provide a more comprehensive understanding of the situation on the ground in Gaza. As events unfolded, a different narrative began to emerge. 
challenging the initial claims made by the Israel Defense Forces IDF. Initially, the IDF asserted that there was a Hamas headquarters located under Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza. However, as investigations progressed, there was a noticeable lack of evidence to substantiate this claim. Despite assertions by the IDF, no concrete proof was provided to support the existence of a Hamas headquarters at the hospital. This raised doubts about the accuracy of the IDF's allegations and fueled skepticism regarding the justification for military actions targeting the hospital. Furthermore, another significant development occurred when the IDF failed to accurately identify the location of Israeli hostages, despite possessing some of the world's most advanced intelligence capabilities. In recent developments, two significant incidents have occurred, shedding light on the ongoing dynamics of the conflict in Gaza. On December 12th, a meticulously executed triple ambush was orchestrated by Hamas paramilitaries in an area of Gaza believed to be under Israeli control. The ambush targeted an Israel Defense Forces IDF, unit, resulting in casualties among the Israeli troops. In response to the initial attack, additional troops were dispatched to provide assistance to the ambushed unit. However, they too fell victim to subsequent ambushes set up by Hamas forces, further complicating the situation on the ground. The Israel Defense Forces IDF, has long adhered to the Dahiya Doctrine, a military strategy characterized by the use of overwhelming force in response to irregular warfare. This approach aims to inflict significant social and economic damage on enemy territories, thereby undermining the resolve of insurgent groups while deterring future threats to Israel's security. The doctrine draws its name from the Dahiya neighborhood in Beirut, Lebanon, which was heavily targeted by the IDF during the 2006 Lebanon War due to its association with Hezbollah. In its application of the Dahiya doctrine, the IDF has historically relied on airstrikes, artillery shelling, and ground incursions to degrade the military capabilities of its adversaries, particularly Hamas in the Gaza Strip. These operations often result in widespread destruction of infrastructure, civilian casualties, and displacement of populations, leading to significant social and economic upheaval in affected areas. Criticism of Israel's military strategy is now emerging from unexpected sources, indicating a growing unease with the ongoing conflict in Gaza. Former UK Defense Minister Ben Wallace has voiced concerns about the long-term repercussions of Israel's actions warning of a potential impact lasting for decades. Even the Biden administration, traditionally a staunch ally of Israel, is showing signs of discomfort with the unfolding situation. The administration's unease reflects broader concerns within the international community about the humanitarian toll of the conflict and the potential for further escalation. As the conflict continues to escalate, there is a growing realization within the Biden administration that the current trajectory is unsustainable and could have far-reaching implications for regional stability and U.S. interests in the Middle East. However, despite mounting criticism and international pressure to de-escalate the conflict, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his war cabinet remain steadfast in their determination to continue military operations for as long as they deem necessary. Netanyahu's government sees the military campaign as essential for ensuring Israel's security and deterring future threats from Hamas and other militant groups in Gaza. This unwavering commitment to military action reflects a deeply entrenched belief within the Israeli leadership that decisive force is the only viable means of addressing security challenges in the region. It is crucial to understand the underlying reasons for the prevailing support for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's response to the ongoing conflict. The attacks on October 7th, characterized by their brutality, deeply shook Israel's sense of security and challenged the nation's assumptions about its ability to protect its citizens. The severity of these attacks, coupled with the perceived threat posed by Hamas and other militant groups, has led to a strong sense of vulnerability among Israeli Jews, prompting many to rally behind Netanyahu's leadership in pursuit of security and stability. Despite criticism from various quarters, including international allies, the majority of Israeli Jews have remained steadfast in their support for Netanyahu's response to the escalating violence. The Prime Minister's tough stance against Hamas resonates with many Israelis who view decisive military action as necessary to safeguard their lives and ensure the country's security in the face of relentless attacks. However, even within Israel, there are signs that support for Netanyahu's approach is beginning to wane. The elimination of three hostages by IDF troops, while intended to neutralize a perceived threat, 
has sparked outrage and condemnation from segments of Israeli society. The loss of innocent lives, particularly in such tragic circumstances, has strained the public's confidence in the government's handling of the crisis and raised questions about the proportionality of its military actions. The IDF commanders are facing immense pressure to achieve success in their military operations, and they are willing to push the boundaries as far as the War Cabinet permits. These commanders, often highly intelligent and focused individuals, understand the gravity of the situation and the expectations placed upon them. However, despite the rhetoric espoused by Prime Minister Netanyahu and others, there is a growing recognition among these commanders that Hamas, or at least the ideology it represents, cannot be defeated solely through military means. This realization poses a significant challenge to the prevailing narrative that military force alone can secure Israel's long-term security interests in the region.